Okay, welcome back, everybody, to our podcast with the Babins today. We've got Emily here joining She's us. She's a guest. She's a guest. <laughs> <I'm> a guest. <laughs> She's an a honored guest. guest. Yes. Um, today, we're just going to be talking about what it's like working with your family and business. Um, I feel like a lot of the times when I'm showing clients and stuff like that, they always find that super fascinating. Like, yeah. you're working with your family and you've mm-hmm. got your kids working for you. And so I just kind of wanted to dialogue about that whole dynamic. Because I feel like we've all learned a lot yes. through this process. We've been doing it for, I don't know, f- uh, six-ish years now, I think. Well, if you count if mm-hmm. you count me yeah. and your mother laying down our life to sacrifice to raise you as children, <laughs> like there's right, some sacrificial things sure. that's, that we die to. That's investment for in order at to, least twenty five. In order years. to create the products that stand up in the world and yeah. bring value. So yeah, I have a lot of stuff that's about me that I'd like to talk about. <laughs> I'm sure you tell. have lots to talk about about you. I do. So if we're talking about me <laughs> and how good of a parent I am. Wow. Great. Oh hey, you're goodness. the best dad I've ever had. It's so true. If that's wow. saying anything. <laughs> this is so good. It's good for you. Hey, that's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess in the beginning, Emily and I, I vividly remember y'all were out of town. Emily and I were taking ACC classes for, I don't know, what was you major? It was a uh, business administration. Yeah, I think it was the so, same thing. We were just taking yeah. ACC classes and y'all were out of town for a week for, I don't remember mm-hmm. why. Yeah, we were on a conference or something. I think yeah. we were in Connecticut. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, and Emily and I had just been talking for a couple of weeks of like, I remember that. what would it look like to it quit college, essentially? Because we didn't really know what we were doing. We just picked like business. Okay, that sounds great. And start doing the real estate thing. And so we'd been talking about it and y'all were out of town and we're like, well, we know they're going to be in the car traveling back or whatever. So let's just call them and just see what they think. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you weren't in college. You would have been in high school. No, we take an ACC classes. It was community college. Oh, that's right. You were living at Debbie's. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I remember that. And I was, I don't know, for some reason we were super nervous about it. Because I guess when you call your parents to be like, hey, I'm dropping out of college. I feel like college is built up. Hell, you are. Yeah, it's like built up as this huge thing. You're going to drop out of college. This is about me. Yeah, well, there's a connotation. I paid for you to go to college. (laughs) Well, yeah. I want to tell my friends my daughter graduated from college. (laughs) She got a master's degree, PhD, whatever. She got a master's degree, but she's living on my couch. Which is a big deal. It is a big deal. Well, yeah, because college, I feel like, in our culture is built up to this huge thing. Which it is. It's important. I'm not saying education is not important. Absolutely. Yeah. What I am saying is it was Kind of, education. <laughs> so do we. <laughs> we actually regret this. <laughs> oh my God. We're so it's just built up in this thing. And then the thought of like dropping out of college has like this weird connotation to it. And that was kind of, I don't know how you felt about it, but I felt kind of like intimidated by that of like. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think it, it, I just, we didn't really know what that would look like too. So we, I think I remember I had already been doing some admin stuff for you guys mm-hmm. or marketing stuff. Marketing, so I was yeah. doing a lot of marketing stuff already. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was, we were, we were working at the winery. I was working at the winery yep. and then doing ACC classes. So I think the transition seemed, it just seemed more smart. I, I know that you'd said it just makes more sense if you, would choose to go into real estate and make money rather than spending money on something that you don't, don't know. know. Yeah. If you, you don't know it. that you want to really commit to. And that's what was happening. So nice. it was like, I'd rather just <laughs> like earn some money. Yeah. I mean, while we're figuring it out, you <laughs> like, might as well start doing something. And it was weird. I don't know if you remember this either, but we talked to y'all. Y'all were like, yeah, totally. If that's what you want to do, like we can start making a plan and all stuff. As soon as we got off the phone, both of us started crying. Do you remember this? Really? Oh, yeah. And it was super weird because wow. I was like, why are we that. emotional about this? Like everything yeah. was fine, but it just, it was one of those moments that it, like, wow. you felt like peace. Like, okay, this was a good decision. Well, and I think that was, it was, it was a, a God thing because I think we had been talking about it and it was like, we both were like, oh, this is what we're supposed to do. And yeah. So it was just, there was a confidence there. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think too, um, I remember that phone call now that you've kind of retold yeah. that story. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Hey, your daughters have uh, this great idea for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and then I thought, I kind of thought great. about the responsibility of leading you guys and what mm-hmm. that implication would be like having you, you know, family members and all that. Now y'all mm-hmm. were not living with us at the time. Yeah. But then thinking, okay, what does this really look like? And and being excited about the prospect, but knowing that that's going to create some growth in both your dad and I and mm-hmm. our real estate roles too, because we're going to have to change, you know, including yeah. you guys. And y'all were young and, and we had had the light, yeah, I guess the real estate company probably around 10, 12 years at that time. Um, 
And so that's, yeah, it's a, it's a big, it was a big adjustment for sure, mm -hmm. yes. but we, we needed it. So, you know, the, the, the first thought in my mind was, you know, well, the, the owner of a business and a dad of, of children, you, you understand that your household uh, is trustworthy, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there's no, there's no problem there. Right. Uh, so you understand that your children are going to do what you said because they've agreed to it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's always this underlying thing in the back of your head, like, well, you know, it took me a long time to get them to fold the clothes. You know? <laughs> uh, Do my the God, on the time. dishes are still there. Yeah. Like, why is this room so dirty? Mm -hmm. You know, so so there's two different pressures that came. One is that pressure. It's parent, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and two, now you're adding uh, two more basically employees or people that I have to go generate more revenue, right? right? So while the revenue was coming, you know, we certainly weren't paying the bills. You guys had a job taking care of things. And so you bring someone into your company. So that's the same as hiring an employee. Oh, yeah. So you've got a child and you've got accountability to an employee. The child relates to you as a family member, which is where people have trouble. Oh, yeah. Because somewhere mm -hmm. the owner of the company, i.e. me and your mother or somebody else, it's very difficult in today's time to explain to a millennial or, you know, other generation, like how difficult it is to increase revenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what it meant for me and your mom is that we had to change the way we did things and we had to count on you to do the things mm -hmm. that we didn't have to do. Right. And that's, uh, that's can be painful mm -hmm. and, and it's not easy. And yeah. it, it, uh, it is the source of a lot of frustration when you talk about inside family, because every person believes they're working hard. Correct. Oh yeah. And, and when you're Everybody struggling is. and you're, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, like the first thing was, you don't know what the I hard doing? I'm working. I know. You know, what wow. is everybody else doing? You know, so yeah. you, you get mm -hmm. this, this, this mindset because the pressure is on you. Mm -hmm. Well, what I found, as far as parenting goes, what I see a lot of friends do and people acquaintances with, they don't want their children to experience pressure. And so they spend their time trying to remove pressure. Mm -hmm. yep. right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the problem is, is that without the pressure, uh, the character doesn't grow in the child. Mm -hmm. But it's not fun to watch because the child makes your life miserable mm -hmm. while you allow them to walk out pressure, yep. right? right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so it doesn't matter how pretty they are. Right. Uh, it's still, you know, something you have to walk through. I know you're not happy about this, but you can do it and you're going to do it. I'm sorry you failed. Do it again. Well, can't you just help me? No, I have to do something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's We're a lot of that. I think the pressure point just brings me back a memory. I don't know if you remember me doing this to you guys, and I did this to the boys recently, is we'd go to the grocery store and the kids would need something. And I'd say, go ask the salesperson. Oh, my and, gosh. And, oh, yeah. And I remember Megan in particular yeah. hated no, I hated that. This. She because I was more it. introverted and social, she hated social it. anxiety stuff. And so, but you guys would always make me do it. And Emily would be like, "I'll go do it." And, and my dad's like, no. "No, no, you get up in the restaurant, go find the waiter somewhere in this restaurant, and ask him for silverware." And I was yes. like, "Oh my gosh, kill me right now!" But, but just, you're welcome. But exactly. But that exercise, I'm just thinking, we were intentional about forcing you guys to get outside your comfort zone to totally. grow the pressure of that. And now you so needed that skill. 100%, and, yeah. In everyday life, but also in real estate, it's such a, you know, communicated, you need to, you know, interact mm -hmm. with people and mm -hmm. ask the tough questions and have mm -hmm. really tough totally. conversations yeah. that it starts off at a very small age of forcing your kid to look at the server at a restaurant and give them their order and acknowledge and be kind and, you know, mm -hmm. all those things. It just is those little elementary things at, at a younger years mm -hmm. really make you into the big, you know, the businesswoman that you are today. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. So. And I'm sure like, I mean, working for your parents, we both, I think all four of us can have experiences of where we've been pushed and grown a lot. And I think for y'all, at least from my perspective, it takes, I don't know, what the right word is, but because your kids are working for you, do you have an extra amount of patience and willing to stick it out? Or, I mean, if, if like, I just think about when I first started, mom was like, basically you're doing all the contract and admin stuff, figure it out. And I was like, <laughs> these are like serious contracts of like 500, like these are people's life savings and just make a system and figure it out. Right. Yeah. Well, it kind of wasn't 
like that. I mean, it was like, here's some classes. Here's some right. classes. It wasn't Keller as Williams hands off. Take. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't shove come, it on you. Yeah, you I'm, come I'm, up and go. I can figure it out. You're okay? smart. <laughs> totally. I'm, I'm for the sake of the story. Yes. <laughs> what, let us Here, help we're doing this. Story. Sure. We want to help. Whatever. You they were not being dangerous and letting an 18 year old just mess with people's stuff. No, they want to clarify that. We empowered her choices. Right. But I know, like in the beginning, I definitely was not disciplined or as responsible or on top of it as I am today. Got it. Yes. And do you think you guys had extra grace because I was your kid versus if I was an employee, I feel like I probably would have gotten the ax like Hmm. two months into it. Um, No, I don't. I don't think we'd ever hired you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, That's probably, probably right? true. We did, we did, yeah. we'd have went and hired a qualified person that already knew those things right. because we didn't right. have the capacity to train. Right. Yeah. We we had the capacity within ourselves mm-hmm. to uh, to conquer what we had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? When you decide you're going to expand, mm-hmm. you have to decide you're going to you're going to allow pressure to hit you so your capacity grows, right? right. Mm-hmm. So it, it, there was no more capacity for us to do any more of the real estate. Mm-hmm. Now, we could go hire an administrative person, mm-hmm. but when you have to, so you got a, a, there's a lot of business stuff there, right? Yeah. Uh, but for me, we just know because we raised our children, if I said to Emily, this is on you and I need you to figure it out, I literally knew. I could go and do something else that mm-hmm. mattered mm-hmm. and she would either figure it out or she'd call me or you'd call me mm-hmm. and we would troubleshoot it right. until you got it done. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And so th- for some, th- the parenting style mm-hmm. is trusted in the core value of integrity. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is my job and I'm going to get it done. Right. What I find is interesting is that you know, friends and family might look at us and go, well, we're controlling. That's the only reason why our children will do whatever, because we control you. Mm-hmm. Um, Help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Emily, are you controlled? <laughs> no, not at all. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Accountable. Uh, totally. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. And sure. so somehow it, it seems like I would just answer your question with there was extra grace yeah. But we kind of already knew what was coming. So yeah. what changed mm-hmm. is our communication. Totally. So I can tell you the biggest yeah. thing that I've learned the older I get, you know, listening skills. Mm-hmm. Listening skills are critical to everything, particularly for an extroverted power driver <laughs> that wants to get the world yeah. conquered and all these mm-hmm. other things, right? Mm-hmm. Can I listen mm-hmm. to what's actually happening? Mm-hmm. Then can I communicate this is how I'm doing? And these are the things that I need, mm-hmm. right? And so, and I found, I think one of the keys to success for all of us, even now within our parenting, mm-hmm. um, I have no problems communicating like, here's how I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And the things that you're doing is contributing to my agitation. I need mm-hmm. your help. Yep. Mm-hmm. Can you stop that? Yeah. Right? Or, or help we, me understand it, yeah. why you're reacting yeah. like that. Yeah. Is there any it. reason why the grass has to be knee high? <laughs> Before we cut Before it. Before I tell you the grass <laughs> needs to be cut. Like right. what's the problem, right? <laughs> so when you when you parent that way, you are we already knew you were administratively thinking. Mm-hmm. We knew that you were not going to let the details slip and you would figure out a system. Right. Way better than I would. Mm-hmm. We already knew that Emily had a creative mindset, that marketing and branding and writing all those things down. We we knew those things about you. Right. Uh, so hiring someone off the street that we didn't know anything about, we would have to do a lot of research before we hired them. So mm-hmm. um, that was a long answer to it. It did stretch our capacity, but we had to stretch our capacity to grow the company. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Right. And there are some tools that we use to, I think, over time that that's helped, was, which is the KPA, which is, you know, Keller Williams has a test assessment yeah. that assesses strengths and weaknesses. And we looked at that, even though we're your parents, we still found a, a, that was very beneficial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And very helpful for us to to make sure that we were putting Megan and Emily in the right roles and making sure that we weren't crushing you because that that really kind of shows okay they're going to be really stressed out if you put them in this job role yeah. or you make them to do these types of tasks on a consistent basis yeah and, and so that was helpful for me to have something kind of in a writing assessment to kind of say okay we are killing Emily by making her do contracts to close pieces where Megan's thriving in that. Right. And and that was really helpful. Yeah. Emily's not touching my contract. Yeah. 
I don't want to touch you, it. You can not do it. You can't do it. It's not. It's yes. not. It's your strength. It's a huge right? deal. Is no excuse. Right. For not mastering it. Right. Yes. Well, and that's and that's the thing is like I think there's a lot of trial and error. So like sometimes I mean. In, especially in the beginning, our job roles changed pretty frequently. Yeah. <laughs> Trying like to that. figure out where is it that we fit and where do we add the most value because mm -hmm. right. there's this balance of like, okay, yeah, I'm this person, but also, and this is how I operate in, in the business, but also does the business need this? That was another conversation we had to yes. have several times was like, Very good. is this actually adding value to a business? And so you have to separate out, okay, you know, this is my daughter, right? Who um, moved to California? And for, still yeah, works only for me. a couple months. For, but who whatever. still works for me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. true. And and Let's is this that. actually <laughs> is this actually adding value? Yeah. To yeah. to yeah. Um, we did have some great conversations about that because oh, yeah. in the midst of it, mm -hmm. although I would say we were paying for it, right? Mm -hmm. It allowed us to have some very hard conversations yep. about. Mm -hmm what it looks like to be an honorable employee, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. right? Yeah. You're getting a salary. You agreed to show up. And do something. You should make the organization equity. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. There's equity that comes out of your service. Yeah, it's a value yeah. exchange. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right? Versus an entitlement. Well, my dad's going to pay the bills, which mm -hmm. none of my children... Mm -hmm. Maybe our younger guys in academy sometimes if we're yeah. fishing, they may think, you know, oh, yeah, dad's going to buy this. And they load the basket full of fishing stuff, right? Because yeah. it's something I enjoy. But when it comes to the, the reality of it, our children understand mm -hmm. this thing in order for it to work as mm -hmm. long as they can see everything. And so right. I think that was the key is, hey, do you understand we have this many leads coming in? And these people have not been contacted. Where mm -hmm. are you? What's mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. So some of those conversations we had while you were in California, mm -hmm. um, I felt like were 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 priceless. Mm -hmm. And so, was there a capacity extra capacity needed or extra grace? Yes. Mm -hmm. However, that did leverage me being a dad. Yeah. Right. Because at the end of the day, what I didn't want is for Emily to show up, or you to mm -hmm. show up going work for another company and just cocking her feet up on the desk or taking advantage of mm -hmm. trust. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I trust you to manage yourself and your calendar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a salary and I'm not going to manage you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you must be productive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to get your stuff done. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm measuring productivity. Mm -hmm. Hey, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Mm -hmm. What do you need from me mm -hmm. in order to be productive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you don't have an integrous person right. that's oh, yeah. willing to self-inspect, mm -hmm. willing to work on what's what's not working well, to come forward and say, hey, I need an education. Mm -hmm. Yep. I need to learn these things. Oh, great. Let's go find that for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. there's a lot of things that we take for granted, too. We have been trained over years in parenting, which... Um, and tools of communication, yeah. which helped us work with you guys and work with other employees and other agents on our team. And so I always kind of think back, okay, this just didn't happen overnight. We just didn't wake up and became just, you know, great no. parents and yeah. had great communication skills. Well, I was. Yeah, yeah I know you were. Except for him, yeah, the I know. one person in the world. But I think, I just think back about how many years of conferences and classes and videos. and A lot of work. A lot yeah. of work that we put into place on how to communicate well. So yeah. if you can get some really good communication skills, then you can work really well with your family. And yeah. you can work really well with hardest. other employees. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so so I think a lot of times people don't put enough emphasis on getting the active listening skills, being mm -hmm. able to reflect, okay, I think I heard you say what, you know, blank, 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 you know, mm -hmm. and, and is that true? Is that really your heart? You know, um, what is really going on? You know, mm -hmm. asking those series of questions that we have those skills in us yeah. that have taken years. Yeah. They're natural now. Yeah. And people, I mean, there's been people in the room when we've all gotten into it, right? We're disagreeing. We're bravely communicating and people are like, the room gets really tense. Yeah, but You're everyone, but it's still <laughs> it's safe. Like, like I've never, but we're not because we're, it's yeah. developed over time, years. Of I know, us. No, I can say this. You're n you're still going to love me. There's that trust and love still, mm -hmm. that safety yeah. in the room. Mm -hmm. But we're having a heated discussion. I think other people have never seen that before of like, mm -hmm. we can go at it and then we'll be fine afterwards. It's going to be totally fine. There's right. no risk of right. damaging right. the relationship when we're properly right. communicating. Mm -hmm. There's feedback of, mm -hmm. 
I can't understand you because you're freaking out right now. <laughs> I feel like this isn't about me. It's about something else. So I'm going to come back and talk about this a little bit later. Whenever I'm not freaking out. I'm intense because I'm scared about I'm these things out. that right. everybody dropped the ball. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, so you're experiencing intensity, but I'm scared. Right. See, that's a real experience and an encounter yeah. for us right mm -hmm. i get afraid my intensity rises and i start driving people yeah i would and prefer I think, people to lead themselves yeah and i think that like there's a statistic i think most family businesses fail after the third generation really yeah it's like 80 percent or something like that is wow. the third generation is when it fails wow and so i think a lot of it is one communication and two, I think it goes back to what mom was saying about being put in the right position. I think there's a lot of times family pressure of like, you do this because this is what we do, right? Correct. Well, reality is that really what that person's built for? Do they want it? Right. There's a lot to of To own dynamics. the responsibility. And then the communication is a big deal because this is also my kid and I'm the dad, so I'm going to yeah. tell you what to do, right? Right. Yep. And like we had a client one time, uh, you and I must have been showing him a house and he had his wife there or something like that. And we'd mentioned, yeah, this is my daughter, Megan. She's on our team, blah, blah, blah. And the whole time we're looking at the house, he kept like, he's like, I work for my dad. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And he's like, he's like really controlling, right? And he would ask me these questions, but basically kind of projecting of like, mm -hmm. oh, I totally understand exactly what mm. your experience has been working yeah. for for your parents because it's like, <laughs> well, they make you do stuff that you don't want to do, right? You know, those thing, kind of things. And I'm like, no. That's not how this works, but I think for him, yeah, it was yeah, a big for deal. him, that's and yeah. I think that's a lot of people's experience yeah. too. Potentially, is well, just your like identity this. too can get really wrapped up, yeah, in like a, also like gaining the approval of your family. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of things. So sure. for his situation, is probably what it was. It was the pressure to actually be in there, and at least for our case, like it was a choice. It's mm -hmm. a choice to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a choice to to be in the business. Mm -hmm. um, but there can be a lot of different experiences. Yeah, and we, I think different. throughout the years, too, even when it's gotten really hard and we've had several moments of looking back of, do you still want to do this? Are you feeling led to go in a different direction? Like at one point I was thinking about maybe going to nursing school and you, you were did. very much like, mm -hmm. okay, if you want to do that, this is how we do and this is how we need to transition right. you out. And we would have, there was always that option and freedom mm -hmm. so we didn't feel like pigeonholed, like right. mm -hmm. everything's on you and you have to do right this piece of yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. I think for us, I, I do keep that in mind, um, having my kids work for us, yeah, making get, sure you, not that we have not... Be concerned about that. We don't put too much pressure and make you feel like you have to um, carry the business further, although we like that and we want yeah. that and we think it's a good idea if, if you're coming alive oh. to it. But the ultimate goal as a parent is you want your kids to thrive mm -hmm. in whatever job that they do. They want um, You want them to, to be excited, you know, yeah. to... Con for their contribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I could paint a picture, like there's, as a business owner versus an employee, you know, I was a corporate employee for a long time, mm -hmm. right? I went into the corporate world and the reason why I, I elevated in the corporate world beyond my education level is because the leadership could rest weight on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So, so, so now I'm a business owner and I realize, okay, um, I, I can't rest weight on this person mm -hmm. or if this person decides to leave i've got to pick that weight up mm -hmm. yep it's right good. and it and i'm mm -hmm. i'm old mm -hmm. right it, sure. the older i get the less of that i want to do right. right and so you could easily find and i guarantee you there's business owners that that are out there that i know they feel this pressure oh, yeah. particularly as employees are responding different ways and the world continues to disconnect the employee from the employer and the employee hides behind the, the boundaries of policy right yeah. and and then then the government says um the the employee's this and the employer has to be that. So now the government has stuck itself in the middle of the employee and employer. Mm -hmm. So there's no connectivity and relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're in a small business, even with the family, like we treat people that work for us that are not our families, they wouldn't know they're not our family. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. We're we're like we're we're very strong conversations. Mm -hmm. I feel like the communication mm -hmm. is the key to everything. Hey, you yeah. want to go to nursing school. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You're carrying a lot of weight in this company and I want you to be free. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's have a real conversation about don't do anything because you're afraid. Don't not do it. Right. Because mm -hmm. you're afraid. Mm -hmm. And you're going to communicate with me so that I don't become afraid yep. when you create a vacuum. Right. right? Yep. Yeah. And that's some of the conversations we've had, even with you moving away and trying yeah. to figure out, 
you know, how do we fill the gap that's being left there? 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Well, even to that too, I mean, recently I was, and it, it goes along with the conversation because uh, I guess it was like it was several months ago now, it was like last year, I felt like I was supposed to step down from my salary position. Mm -hmm. And I know that was a hard conversation to kind of have because it was like, there was a lot of reasons, but I had realized, I, I self-inspected and I realized I didn't feel like I was actually adding value to the business with the role I was in. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, this was also a process that I did with with the Lord. Um, but I, I had a conversation with you. I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to, I don't feel like I am bringing mm -hmm. the, what you guys need on the team. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, that was an example of like when I yeah, was like, you know what, I I need to step out. I need to, because I I felt like I was taking advantage of certain things, mm. and it you just got to be honest with yourself. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you you like you have to, and I think there for me personally it was because I I I wanted to be involved. I wanted to feel a part of the company. I wanted to be involved with everybody, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I was like, I can't just continue to stay in a position that I'm not. I'm, it's not even just about me thriving. It's about really like this business. And mm -hmm. for you guys, it's mm -hmm. dishonoring. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to continue to, um, not bring the, the level of, um, of value that you guys needed. That's and good. so I stepped down from my salary role and just went to commission where I was just an agent. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's a whole other testimony yeah. within itself. Cause yeah. I didn't, I was, there's, was, there's was fear there. It's like, yeah. oh, I like it's having a, a salary. Step. I like yeah, security. Lean, and there's some security there. I got yeah. money coming yeah. in every month. And <laughs> like, but also like that was the, the Lord's grace because I didn't really notice much of a difference stepping that's out. Simple. And it was, yeah. it was a big deal. So. Well, mm -hmm. and it put, it, it caused you to grow probably in ways that you could probably look back and realize now mm -hmm. oh yeah because of making that step of getting outside of some comfort yeah. zones and stuff like that which yeah. is really cool how do you manage boundaries what does yeah. that mean to everybody if i talk about a boundary like one of the boundaries mm -hmm. you know what what <laughs> that's a conversation that's the we hardest have a lot thing <laughs> yes i think everybody who asks like what's it like working with your parents and stuff I always it, the boundaries are the biggest thing, and I always say, don't live with your parents and work with them. It's really hard. We learned that the hard way. It just not that anyone was intentionally mm -hmm. trying to whatever. It's hard. It's just hard when you live with someone and work with someone. And I'm sure you guys can speak to that. Just being married, yes. right? It's hard. It feels <laughs> oh, like yeah. you could never. <laughs> Can't the, get the, the, the work conversation never ends. It's yes. always about work. Yeah, we have to be careful about that. that. It ends on the deck of a boat <laughs> yeah. and leave everybody at home. Right. That's it's a true. boundary, Go. the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gulf of Mexico. But that's just something we learn. It's just like, okay, we can't live here and work with you guys. I'm so sorry. I love y'all. But like, it's <laughs> so just, we need some separation between... <laughs> Hey, you guys are now my parents when I come over here. It, and in the, in the yeah, office, so you're my employee, right? That's, That's a boundary. Really it's just good. like, not that we're always the best about, oh, never talk about work stuff when we're hanging no. out personally. Of course, you're going to talk about things. It just happens, right? Um, but that is, to your point, it was, it. we did see a, a better communication. Everybody was happier. <laughs> there was yeah. way more peace and joy mm -hmm. when you guys did yeah. leave our house and mm -hmm. were working because then you show up at work, we have conversations at work, and then when you come over to our house, it's family you're visiting time. and it's yeah. just good. It's family time. And right. so it is that separation is definitely needed. And yeah. Seth's struggling with that now. Like he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. just yeah. like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> well, I gotta get I, out of here. <laughs> yeah. So so there's a there's a lot of conversations in my mind for the boundaries needs to be um Hey, Dad, you know, w w what do I do about this? Like, uh, here's a boundary. Go figure it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about that boundary, yeah. no, right? That's, and you're accountable for yeah. it, right? Well, that's also something I learned about you specifically because, like, obviously you're working. Y'all probably learned a lot more about us, seeing it's us in different situations, the same thing about you. What I know very clearly about you is you don't care if you got it done right the first time. Did you try? That's pretty much yeah. all you care about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I learned that pretty quickly. Obviously, you wanted to get it done right eventually, right? Yeah, but if, if you, you didn't even try, don't even ask for help because you're not. Don't you're, call me. Yeah, do not even. Yeah, Why I learned that do very first? quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because that's part of the perseverance push, right? Yeah. That's part of you stepping in. So, so, in, in, so one of our core values in our family is about being courageous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
right? It's a passive thing to go, well, mom, and I watch this happening with all of you guys. And mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, I can see it happening, right? Mom is the easier person to get through, totally. right? Totally. It's mm -hmm. in her. So soft. It's in her. I don't have to go do this thing. She's going to give me everything with the spoon, Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> with right? sugar on it. With sugar on sugar. it, right? <laughs> Make it sweet. Because mom wants to be the good guy, mm -hmm. right? And that mm -hmm. she's good always cop, the good cop. guy. I, yeah. can be, I can be bad too. I can be bad. Yeah, if she I can. Need to be well, she can. The bad cop doesn't that doesn't fit on you very well. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, no. in, in, but at the end of the day, there's a there's still a, a requirement to be courageous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's good. right. Yeah. So when you wanted to step out of your salaried role, I kept looking at Megan going. How is she going to afford to live, right? <laughs> so we were talking about you behind your back. It's I, wonderful. I, yeah. yeah. It's, it's wonderful. It's just, yeah. And, and Megan's like, why do you care? Just leave her alone. Let her <laughs> do whatever. She, sink or swim. Let's let her sink do whatever she wants to do. Yeah, baby, right? go for it. Why do you care? <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't know. I've never been here before. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that, that, for me, it was like, yeah. that's, a, that's a courageous thing to step into as a parent. It's like, yeah. I look up now, you know, we were watching an economic collapse. There's not a, there's not a day that goes by. It's like. Okay, how do I, as an entrepreneur and a father, mm -hmm. make sure we weather this storm coming? Yeah. Like we got to right. button down the hatches, a lot mm -hmm. of work to be done, mm -hmm. but I can't let my anxiety now drive the that's behaviors good. of my mm -hmm. leadership. That's yeah. really good. Uh, and that's, that, that's a, so that's a boundary that I have to put around myself to mm -hmm. make sure that I manage myself in a way that's important, right? So yeah. then mm -hmm. I go. Mm -hmm. You know, and look for more education. Look and talk to people. Talk yeah. to wise guys. Talk to mm -hmm. people that have been through some of these things before. Yeah. And then my hope is that all my family watches, you know, and we yeah. create models. Oh, yeah. And at the end of the day, you take away the core values that you can mm -hmm. raise your children with. Yeah. So that the third generation doesn't collapse because right. of entitlements. Yeah. Because it's really easy for the youngest child in our household he is a prince. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We never had to live yeah. like how no, we did. No, no. He, he we had a thousand square foot home with ten kids. Yes. We don't, yeah. yeah. And, and I know. yeah. I know. He's spoiled. Shebang. He's spoiled. Well, he, he's also, he, but so here's the trainings, right? You add value where you are. Yeah. You communicate bravely. This is how I'm doing. You ask powerful mm -hmm. questions. How can I help you? Yep. Those are the kinds of things that we just go through yeah. in order to sustain the culture that's in our family. Mm -hmm. uh, I just personally wouldn't recommend uh, families working together if they don't have a strong family culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you go try to build a business with your family, that's going to be a that's, problem. Because yeah. even like difficult. for us, yeah. because y'all are our parents, there is a different feeling of responsibility. It's the family business that we had a conversation at one point of, I feel like I'm being volunteered and made to do things without me being able to say no. Yes. And we had this long conversation of just like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm an adult. Yes, I'm an employee and I'll do my job. When it mm -hmm. comes to things outside my job, mm -hmm. I have to have the right to say yes or no. I'm mm -hmm. always so willing good. to help. Mm -hmm. I'm always willing mm -hmm. to be there mm -hmm. and support everybody because I want everyone to succeed. Mm -hmm. That's right. However, there is a boundary of I'm also an adult. Right. In this space, I'm an employee, and I have to have the right to say no. I don't know why you don't like grocery shopping for us. I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we got I can quick. write that into your job description. We've got well, I have to right agree now. to take that. Yeah. Well, and, then, and, then comes, yes. and then it comes, and then it comes with a little, you know, Lord. if I get, if I have to do more work, then yeah. there's some value exchange. There's remember that whole thing? That's right. So. No, I don't no, remember that. I do remember that conversation well. <laughs> and, and that's a conversation that I have to revisit quite often with all the kids is, yeah. is realizing where's the, where's the boundaries? What have, what are the roles that they've committed to? And if mm -hmm. we ask them to do something outside of those roles, whether mm -hmm. it's chores, going above and beyond with just n normal household chores, yeah. you know, there's, there needs to be an understanding of what that looks like and a, yeah. and a very um, upfront conversation about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because I think that's where we ended up inevitably, I just know of stories where I've hurt you mm -hmm. in particular and other people by committing us and saying, well, come on, Megan, we're doing this. And you're like, mom, I didn't agree to that. Right. So it's, it's, that's a challenge as parents is yeah. for me. It's a challenge as a husband. It's just over committing, yeah. right? Yeah. Over committing. But that's or, the thing. If you don't have the courage to confront Y'all keep doing this and it's killing me. I need to yes. set a boundary. Yes. I would continue to yes. be put in that place to where now we're going to have a big explosion. Right. I'm just going to yeah. 
leave or whatever. It's just well, we try to create a safe space that you could do that. And no, it wasn't 100%. difficult for you to do yeah. that. I'm sure it still took a lot of bravery totally. from your part to say, hey, I well, need to have this conversation. There's lots of crying, now. but it still happens, right? Right, yeah. You, you still you push it through it. it. You get through the emotional part and you still have to communicate <laughs> a lot the of, thing, uh, right? And reality is, is like, and people who are listening probably will be like, oh yeah, that's like my family or that is not like my family. You right. guys are probably listening to us. I could yeah. never like, say that to my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. which is uh, honestly a lot of what Megan and I get as far as like communicating to you guys mm -hmm. us being able to confront you mm -hmm. not in a dishonorable way that's, right and that's, that's the, key the key because i think a lot of parents feel dishonored mm -hmm. by confrontation confrontation yeah. in itself can be done and very honoring mm -hmm. and and it's all i i remember y'all drilled this into us when we were younger is the tone in which you are speaking. Mm -hmm. And so like tone is a big deal and attitude is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. So if your attitude is horrible and you're confronting, well, the person's going to feel offended. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but yeah, like I think also you two modeled that in as, as a couple, that's a big deal. Modeling brave communication and confrontation mm -hmm. in a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. And so from when we were like really little, we, you guys did a good job cultivating a, a, a safe place for us mm -hmm. to be honest and to make our own. I even remember um, like deciding whether to be homeschooled or going to public school. Yeah. That was our choice. Right. And yeah. you guys emphasized that. Mm -hmm. And because it was our choice, we then took we had accountability and responsibility. There's consequences there was to consequences. Two choices and you no, you chose to go to public school, you're finishing out the year. That's I don't right. want to be in public school anymore. <laughs> so Sorry. um You're yeah. gonna finish. You're gonna yep. finish. You but start yeah. something, you finish it. Exactly. Yep. Well, all of that though saying is like you guys did a good job cultivating that in from the get-go. And yeah. so as an encouragement to all their families, if you're wanting to do that, like really Create a culture, create a culture of brave communication mm -hmm. and um, don't be afraid of confrontation and yeah. give grace to people to for people to figure it out, too. Sometimes it wasn't nice. Yeah. yeah. And I would say yeah, yeah. from from creating a culture, just so there's some context. Right. Mm -hmm. We had the ability to look at you guys and say, you're going to choose. Right. But mm -hmm. we asked lots of questions to totally. discern the motivational value, right? Yeah, why? I mm -hmm. don't want to be in middle school anymore. I hate the peer pressure and all these things. Okay, mm -hmm. well, maybe this is good for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay. Totally. So give me a reasonable plan and help me see purpose behind not doing mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. So again, I put the purpose value systems on you. So mm -hmm. when we talk about culture, culture is attitudes, systems, beliefs, behaviors mm -hmm. around core values. Mm -hmm. So the core value of honor and courage mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and connection and community was mm -hmm. such a big deal for us mm -hmm. that we wanted to make sure, okay, you don't want to go to high school anymore. What's the reason behind that? And help me understand how you're tying it to the purpose in life that you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then once you could stand up and say that, you said it, so now I just hold you accountable to what you, you said. said. Yeah. Good. Versus when we told our friends that we did, you could just, I'm telling you, I could feel it in the room. People yeah. looking at us, you're a terrible parent. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it, dude. You just let your kids do that? Like, no, you can't. That's illegal. You can't yeah. just let your kids make that. Well, well, how, uh, well, how are I they going to make big decisions, you know, yeah. outside of my house yeah. yes, if 100%. I can't walk with them through the consequences? So the yeah. question becomes is, as a parent, are you willing to help your kid clean up the mess that they create? Yep. I would have rather have done that while you were in high school oh, yeah. than to be married with three kids. Come on, and big end life up with decisions it. making bigger oh my messes. Gosh, yeah, like, oh. Those messes are so much easier to clean up. Make yeah. as many messes as you can when you're younger because yeah. it's easier to clean up. Yeah. yeah. Ask yeah. as many questions that you can mm -hmm. before Amen. you start making messes yeah. when you're younger. And there's decisions we had That's made right. that like, hey, I want to do this thing. And you'd be like, if you're asking my opinion... That's not a good idea because X, Y, and Z, but you can free to, you're free to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And we would make those decisions and there's a mess. And you would always say, well, we'll help you clean it up. Yep. But what did you learn? Yep. And mm -hmm. that's something we say very frequently in our house is, what did you learn? We <laughs> love that question. It's fun. It's funny. But it's powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. I'm sorry that's happening. What did, what did you learn? You, make it, you can make very powerful um, decisions or you make, you know, also very powerful decisions that can have, you know, big impacts. All too. decisions yeah. so are powerful. All decisions yep. are powerful. It's either powerfully good or powerfully, or powerfully bad. Powerfully stupid. Yep. yep. Either one. 
whatever one. Mm-hmm. They show powerful. powerful. Exactly. And if you make a powerful, stupid decision, yep. and I rescue you from that, the consequences inside of the stupidity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is what you need yeah. to shape totally. you. Yeah, it's good. So you avoid stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I didn't stupid. think about like even in the business At all stuff. Costs. I only I the major mistakes I've ever made in real estate. I mean, not major like nothing terrible yeah. really yeah. happened, but the mistakes I've made. I really hadn't made those again. Mm-hmm. Usually it's a one-time thing. That's good. I, I got a couple I can list off right now. I'm sure. I'm never doing that again. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you feel the consequence of that mistake. And if you're not allowed to feel it, mm-hmm. you're going to keep making it over and that's over good. and over oh and gosh. over again. And that's a great that's down. a great slogan for a t-shirt. What? I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I'm sure we can make a and then on the back of you know, first, I'm never doing that again. In the back of it says, "What did you learn?" <laughs> yeah, there you go. We should, I'll get you that for Christmas. <laughs> uh, I'll wear it. I'm yeah. telling you right you now, wear I would yeah. wear it. it uh, so, uh, I, I guess in wrapping up, what my it, it, when we look at legacy, mm-hmm. uh, for Danielle and I, we just kind of decided we're mothers and fathers. Yeah, uh, we in the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, how we lead in the church, how we lead in business, how we lead mm-hmm. in our family, we mothers and fathers. Our mm-hmm. role and goal is to live our lives free mm-hmm. uh, and, and encourage our kids and the people around us to be free, discover destiny and purpose, go after it. Mm-hmm. We live mm-hmm. in the greatest country in the world where you mm-hmm. can still pursue those values, mm-hmm. even yeah. in the worst day. Yeah. Yeah. You mm-hmm. still live in one of the greatest countries in the world mm-hmm. uh, that you can pursue uh, your purposes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You, you just, as a parent, you cannot stand by and watch people just sit down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so the youngest child in a family, you know, a middle class family can sit down and go unnoticed and mm-hmm. live luxuries. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can't allow it to happen. It requires a lot out of a parent. We don't allow it to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I know folding that clothes is so hard mm-hmm. and, and the world is against you. Mm-hmm. And and this is you're a slave. I know. <laughs> but. Folding the clothes is not as hard as being in prison and having yes. bombs dropped on your house. Yeah, hundred yeah. so, percent. You know, there's no way for our children, particularly the more prosperous a family gets as a legacy, mm-hmm. the parents have to become more intentional mm-hmm. about allowing a child to experience the consequences of choices. Yes, mm-hmm. the more rescuing the more escaping from mm-hmm. character transformation, the less and less likely you're going to have a legacy transformation. Yeah. I can't hand a million dollars to my great grandchild Mm -hmm. because they don't have the capacity to carry it Yeah, Mm -hmm. because the parents didn't carry the core values. Mm -hmm. Right. So those are some things that I think, um, those are really, those are hard. Mm -hmm. They're they're hard. Mm -hmm. uh, It takes intentionality. It takes thought. It takes active growing constantly. Yeah. I think, uh, as interesting as Sequoia tree, I found this out recently. It never stops growing. It mm. always grows until it dies. dies. Wow. And I thought, man, that's such a challenge. I was really impacted by that, thinking that, you know, even though maybe you can, a family can reach a epitome of legacy or whatever, but you always want to just keep growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that creates the, just the, the legacy, the, the push for the younger generation to also want that's to just so grow. Good. That's so, so mm-hmm. good. It's funny because it made me think about, we just came back from Louisiana and, you know, and, you know, with my, my brothers and we're, we're, we're having a great time, but. I mean, I'm 49 years old, a little bit mm-hmm. overweight, standing up in the boat all day long. You wake up the next morning after two days, and my body's going, oh. <laughs> you know, like, oh. But I, I got up out of the bed. It was early in the morning, right before daylight, and I sit up, and I'm, I can feel my body. And I thought, I'm going to live my life until I die. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> I no, got up, and, but I'm going to live my life until I die. That's hey, it. Where we're going. going to go. And, you know, right. So <laughs> uh, I think that's kind of the attitude that we approach life with. You know, you live it full. Mm-hmm. If you live it honestly, mm-hmm. integrity and on pur- with integrity and on purpose, yeah. mm-hmm. then you're going to naturally become leaders. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a grave mistake to run out and go try to become a leader. Mm-hmm. In my mind, mm-hmm. trying to become a leader brings a level of pressure on me that just sucks. <laughs> it's not easy. It looks all shiny and pretty when it's done. When the person well, everybody done wants it, but... the benefits of popularity. Yeah, right. right? right. But leadership, leadership mm-hmm. looks like you're going out and you're doing something and you're living something attractive. Yeah, and people want to follow that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or they don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you need to be okay with either one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So, so that whole thing is about identity, right? Mm-hmm. So our family right now looks like we have a lot of questions about 
well, people have their own perspective. Why? Well, they probably control all the kids or, you know, the kids are afraid to go do something different or why? Lots of questions. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we enjoy our family. We don't, mm-hmm. I want to die with all my children around my feet. I don't, I don't want to, mm-hmm. I don't want to die alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't want my children to have to be scattered all over the world. Not that they can't. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, there has to be a value of connection, mm-hmm. you know, as we get older. And I want to work hard to make sure that connection is protected, mm-hmm. uh, even as we get off and start getting married and, mm-hmm. you know, coming into conversations with uh, future son-in-laws that mm-hmm. says, uh, a text message, I can't read the tone. Please don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> uh, I need to hear your tone. That can be another podcast about how you oh, incorporate yeah, like, people totally from outside of your family. We don't want the world to know that. We too. totally do. It's good. I'm sorry, it's Cooper. Staff. Yeah, it's, great. it's fine. He loves it. Everyone's learning. So you're still learning. Don't communicate via text. Always pick up the phone and call. Not See, that's something. Yeah, not to him. <laughs> not to most people. I and he to. will let you know. I need to. Brave communication. So what? when you send me a text, <laughs> what I hear is. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it's, um, that's not what I meant. You're yeah. a cranky old crap. <laughs> oh. He did not say that. He did, but not, he did not say that. <laughs> no. He doesn't have a problem communicating. Right no. Hey, thanks for watching our podcast. We so appreciate all of the support people are giving us. We love people. We love real estate. We love business. We love the place where we live. If you know anyone thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, please give them our number. We'd love to help them.